If you missed it live, then you're in luck. You're listening to the Hey Techies Rewind. He is a 2007 third-round draft pick from the farm in Stanford, three-season starting quarterback with the Buffalo Bills, and a season with a piece with the Jaguars and the Eagles, including two training camps with the Oakland Raiders. His vast experience spans all levels of the game from high school to NFL, now co-founder and VP product and business development at Striver Labs, Mr. Trent Edwards. Welcome to the program, sir. Thanks for having me on the show, Michael. I'm excited to uh, get a chance to talk to you. Yes, sir. Real excited to talk to you. And uh, so I, I guess I'm just going to get right into it. Um, you don't know much about the show, so I'll just share a brief, uh, little brief thing. We're just a technology show here in Jacksonville State uh, University. Uh, it's three guys that work in IT department here at the university, and we just threw this thing together. We try to do tech help and interview wonderful people like you. And so that's a little bit about the show. Um, but now, Trent, as I understand it, after your run in the NFL while visiting family, you made a stop at the farm, a.k.a. Stanford University, and your former teammate, Derek Belch, said, hey, would you li- would like your opinion? Will you try these on? And so what was your reaction? Yeah, you're exactly right, Michael. I, uh, I spent about eight years in the NFL, and I'm about a year removed from uh, being retired now. And last Thanksgiving, I was up visiting my family, and one of my former teammates, Derek Belch, was um, in the area. It's about 20 minutes away from where I grew up, and uh, he had called me and just said, hey, come over to, to campus and come check out what I've been working on these last couple of years while I coach at Stanford. And so I went over there and had the chance to see the virtual reality technology that uh, he had developed with the help of one of the professors on campus and uh, alongside Coach David Shaw. And I, uh, having the experience of playing the quarterback position and, like I said, a year removed from playing it, I, I put the headset on and almost felt as if I was, I was playing the position again. It's, it's very immersive. It's a 360-degree video. You can hear everything. And uh, I immediately took the headset off and asked how I could help Derek, and that was um, right around a year ago today. Wow. And um, I imagine with your quarterback experience that that's been very helpful to them. Um, I think it has. I, I think I bring a passion to the to the company that you know is based off of you know, playing the quarterback position and really wanting to help quarterbacks improve and help coaches improve. And you know, I'm doing the best that I can with my knowledge of technology and, and playing the position before and kind of blending those two together and you know trying to make the best product we possibly can. Right. So regarding uh, the headset goggles, I understand you are using Oculus Rift. Uh, do you know if similar brand other goggles could be used? Uh, currently, we are using those for our uh, particular product. I know there are other headsets out there that we don't use, but uh, only because the, the DK2 Rift, which we use now, uh, works best uh, with the computers that we use and the, the cam- and the cameras and you know, blending that all together it has, has worked out the best for us. Okay, so it sounds like to me maybe the software is really specific to the Rift. Um, it is, and I've, I kind of came a little bit later in the development process when I came on board with Striver. You know, that, those, um, that software and hardware was, was already established that we were going to use uh, both of those. Okay. All right. So um, what about now, do you have any idea if, if they have any uh, plans like maybe there's Google Cardboard and there's some other ones that, that really uh, are more mobile? I know this is tethered and tied, but there's a possibility maybe later on to be more mobile. Um, there is. We're, we're definitely open to trying new, more flexible hardware that would allow the user to not be tethered to the computer and you know if if we're not sacrificing quality of the footage we're right. we're definitely open to that I, i've seen google cardboard and i've seen some of the samsung gear footage which are both mobile um, but in my in my own opinion I, I don't know if it compares to the footage right now where it stands uh, to, to what we're doing so we're going to stick with what we have but we're flexible you know, moving forward if, if some of those other products are as good if not better we're definitely looking to switch over to that now you mentioned uh, filming so as it relates to filming what's the best time of day that they figured out um yeah it's both i mean we're both day and night we like um it's more so if it's rainy or windy that makes the process a little bit more difficult 
uh, sun, uh, nighttime, indoors is fine. I think to answer your question kind of in the other way, more so what we don't want is is the wind and the and the wet elements of the weather. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, now, would one of the hurdles be the time-consuming task of developing an initial play library? Is is that going to be a problem for, say, uh, your clients uh, to get started on this? Yeah, it's not – it's pretty seamless. You know, we're, we have a setup right now where we can, you know, easily integrate into a, a current college or NFL practice, and they can go about their normal normal business – you know, with, without us really getting in the way, and we're we're trying to develop libraries for these teams. We have uh, a handful of teams currently right now that have built up a VR library of plays that, you know, really they've benefited from in-season preparation work, and they're going to benefit a lot in the off-season when they're, you know, trying to understand their own playbook a little bit better without having to go up against an opponent. Yeah. Now I know. Uh, I, I think you had mentioned a while ago you weren't early on, but I know one of the first. Uh, things I read about this is that one of their first attempt consists of GoPro cameras sort of banded together uh, out on the field. Uh, I guess they have they moved past that? Do they have a particular camera they're using um, that they're actually capturing all this, multiple cameras? Yeah, we, we have a system in place and just for the sake of, um, you know, trying to keep some of our, you know, information a little bit private. We oh, just, I understand, we the, yeah. No, 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 we use a, uh, yeah, we use a six camera system um, you know, on a, on a tripod that goes onto the field and that's worked best for us. It okay. has allowed us to, you know, create the best spherical video we possibly can that doesn't you know, cause the user to be nauseous or dizzy and gives them the most, um, you know, effective and actually trains the brain when they do prepare for games. And the system we have in place has, has really worked out the best for us and the teams that we're working with so far. Okay, yeah, I saw uh, where the uh, coach of Stanford he had said that they, that he had seen one that really made him sick. They had put a GoPro on the top of I think Lux's head uh, helmet one time, and he just couldn't stomach to even watch it. So, yeah, 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 and and I know you have an IT background, Michael, and you know anytime new technology comes out. And if it's if it's not properly done, it really has an impact on the user oh, moving sure. forward. And there's definitely a reputation that that comes with VR. And I think a lot of the the earlier developed you know VR content out there was really not that well done. And and we've run into some some users that really don't want to you know see our stuff just because they think it's the GoPro on the helmet or it's right. you know, going to be something they've seen in the past that really wasn't all that good. But you know you quickly see once once you get into our head that we're we're doing a much better job than than people have done in the past. Now, I heard that I heard that that I've read that that is true, but I've also read that uh, at the combine this year back in April that was not the case. People were amazed. Uh, so we we were at the combine this year. Is that the combine you're, you're yes. talking about? Yes, yes sir. Or, uh, yes sir. Yeah. Yeah, so we were able so our our company started last season. Stanford was able to use right. uh, Striver and use our use our product. And we then took that um, come February into Indianapolis and met with probably 15 or 20 different coaches and executives. And that led to a lot of momentum and uh, has led us to six NFL teams and nine college teams right now. So we're at a total of 15. And um, a lot of that was just the, the buzz that was generated from you know being in Indianapolis in February to, to show this to a lot of those coaches and staff. Right. And, and so I want to remind my, our listeners tonight, um, this is not – this this is not like the virtual reality some of you may think of. This is not animation. This is live video where they record the actual plays. And so like a quarterback would see the defense, they would be able to read that, right? They'd be able to read that quickly and learn that play before they ever actually get on the field. Yeah, you're exactly right, Michael. And I'm glad you brought that up just as far as the, the realness, the spherical video that we do shoot. You're seeing the actual – and for game jerseys, you're seeing the green grass, you're hearing all the calls, and a lot of our competitors out there are kind of doing a little more of a, a CGI or you know computer version of, of what we're doing. And if you think about the sport of football and you're trying to prepare for a game come Saturday or Sunday, you're always watching film. Right. And that film comes from the sideline or the end zone really high up. It's a, you know, a 2D kind of one-camera shot. Sure. And that's not really where the positions are played. You're, you're playing the positions from the field, from – actually on on the grass and, and we're able to capture those those angles with the cameras that we have now and it it leaves you with a very immersive real you know actual brain 
you know, training effect that um, you know a, a lot of people are really enjoying so far. Now, I, I just re- you brought something to my attention that I just thought about. Now, does this include audio, or is this not, you're not looking at that right now? Uh, this does include audio as well. So everything uh, we capture, uh, both the video and the audio. So. Th- you could actually pop in a real loudness, uh, like loud crowd. I know sometimes teams pop in the music. Sometimes to train for a game, they pop in loud music on the side. To, you know, for say if you, for instance, if you're playing at LSU, it's going to be loud. So you really could train a quarterback to ignore all that, right, or get some sense of it. Yeah, we do. We the other thing that happens is if we're filming practice, a lot of times teams when they're playing on the road already pump in music on the field while practice is going on. Sure. So we're already capturing that audio that is then, I guess if you want to call it, pumped into the, the headset and the right. headphones okay. um, you know, in VR as well. Okay, so we're a tech show, as we've talked about, and but what about the specs for the PC? I mean, I'm assuming with this, the video requirement's probably the top of the list, right? Yeah. The, I, again, I, I want to remind you, I'm a, I'm a former football player. I'm not as as IT as some of the other I got uh, you. individuals in our company. Uh, I understand. To kind of give you a heads up on, or, or more of a direction on the computers we're using, I know we use some pretty high-tech laptop computers that have gaming chips with sort of uh, video cards that are uh, okay. up, to, up to speed enough to show you know, VR footage. And, you know, if, if, you, if it's not, the computer is not compatible with the headset and can't run uh, the footage that we need, then it's, it's not worth it. So we definitely have to have a pretty powerful computer to to display our, our footage. Okay, right. I think I noticed that uh, it seems like the videos I've seen, they're they're actually using a laptop um, with one of the videos I've seen. I don't know if they're just using that to view it or if that's actually running the entire thing. I, I, that I couldn't tell from the, the video. Yeah, we're, we're using a laptop. And the other the other feature that I really like is, is we're able to then pair that feature, sorry, pair this, this screenshot onto a, a big screen TV within oh, a football yeah. meeting room as well. So whoever is in the headset, as their head moves, you can see what they're seeing on not only on the computer screen but also up on a on a television. So if a, a player or another a coach in the room and wants to talk, you know, through what the person's seeing sure. in the headset, uh, which happens all the time for the teams we're working with, um, that's that's easily available, and it's not just a individual using experience it's more of a group experience when it gets to that point i tell you something that just came to me trent is that this has a lot more application beyond football um i see a lot of different applications for this real-time education and i'm calling it that because a a quarterback we talked about i'm repeating myself i know but a quarterback can learn the actual plays before he ever gets on the field i said that but this is going to give a quarterback so much more time actually developing the skill of reading what he sees and uh I actually see this maybe going further. Um, you know, I could, I could, I know, I could visualize maybe using it in situations where police are training a officer to be able to defuse situations, learn to defuse situations because it's so immersive. You're exactly, right. you're right on, Michael. That's we, we've had some some interactions with you know military law enforcement, and you know if you if you take kind of a big picture look at somebody that needs to gain experience without actually having the time to go out uh, into real life and get that experience. If you can put them into an immersive, you know, real sort of demo that you can in virtual reality with you know, what we're developing, it's, it's not just sports. It, it can go into the military or, or law enforcement and give those, you know, first or second year um, you know, individuals a chance to kind of experience it before they actually have to go you know, into the, into the field. Right. And without all the, uh, tear, wear and tear on your body, especially if you're a quarterback getting hit every play or possibly, I know practice, <laughs> they usually don't, but, but, but I noticed in the video I saw, and I'm, I keep mentioning it and I'll just tell it was the ESPN special they did. Uh, she got hit right away <laughs> with the, uh, with the lineman. I mean, the uh, tackle off the side or whatever she, and uh, he was explaining to her, no, you got to throw it quicker. You got to look, look this way. You just got, you just got knocked out. So, and of course she didn't. Um, yeah. but, 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 so that's a really, um, I think that's an interesting aspect to this and, and it's not something everybody's doing. I know I read, you do have a, a probably a couple of competitors out there, but this, this is so new and, um, it's really amazing. Hey, I'm assuming high schools are on the long list of possible clients. 
Um, yeah, we're, we're we're trying to get into that that market. We've we've had conversations with with some brands that are are willing to to sponsor more of a high school version of what we're doing. Uh, there's some camps and some you know, all star games that we're trying to get involved in. And if you think about the NFL and the college levels, there's you know there's a limit on how many teams you know are willing to do this. And you know the next uh, you know level I guess would be high school that we could go into and create some revenue and some. Um, you know, get, get our foot in the door with the high school market and start to to go that route with it too. Has has been our thoughts too. Yeah, it looks like it could be a great game changer for them. Um, it, it, I think so too. I think I think with the generation we're in now, there mm-hmm. we have a lot of visual learners. There's not sure. long attention span as there was with previous generations. Right. It's the visual stimulating type world we're in now, where these kids you know need something to continue to help them um, keep their attention and keep them you know learning and, and processing in their brain. What about uh, this idea, uh, possibly a college looking at a high school quarterback? Now, if they're good, they're just good. I, I don't think this would. But if they're already immersed in this product and then the college has it, it looks like a win-win to me. Um, it definitely would be. If, you know, for instance, you know, a local high school player in, in Jacksonville is, is you know, comfortable in VR and comfortable in, with what we're doing and you know, Jacksonville State University wants to, you know, recruit him and they already have UVR it's if there is a level of comfort on on all these levels it it makes it a lot easier for players and coaches okay well look we've talked about the the whole system and it sounds great and and that is striverlabs.com and if you want to know more about it you can go there and of course, all the the gentlemen that, the gentlemen that are involved in this, it is there's another gentleman that I, I, I his name slips my mind, but he's actually written with another author a couple of books about VR. He's in um, virtual reality. He actually has a lab there at, at Stanford, right? He does. That, that's uh, our chief visionary is Professor Jeremy Balin. Yeah, he has uh, started uh, the Stanford Human Interaction Lab on campus, and has been involved in, in virtual reality for over 20 years. He's the brains behind everything we're doing. Anything that, you know, we do want to add or change, it, it goes through him. He's really been instrumental on where we are today and where we're going to end up. Okay. Well, what about you? Uh, you spent some time in the NFL. Um, if you if you care to talk to me just a minute, what, what was that like? <laughs> it, was, uh, it was very enjoyable. I, I have, you know, a lot of great lessons learned, a lot of you know, great coaches and players that I, I had as teammates. And, you know, it's I did spend the 2010 season in Jacksonville, so I, was, I know exactly where you guys well, are. Well, actually, at, but... I've got to stop you. I apologize to you. We're, that's Jacksonville, Florida, right? You're talking that is about correct, yeah. uh, We're in Alabama, but it's. I'm no, no, no. <laughs> no, Trent, it's okay. We get it confused. People confuse us all the time. No big deal. And the, <laughs> could carry on with what you were Thank saying. Thank you for stopping me. Carrying you on what we're doing. <laughs> No, but I, I think with the, the beauty of what I'm doing now, like I mentioned earlier, is, you know, I have the background that can really, you know, grow this the right way and not just, uh, you know, get this out there and just be kind of an, an average product. I, I take a lot of pride in what I did on the field, and I'm, you know, taking that same approach to what I'm doing with Striver. And the other, the great part about our, our company is we're all um, surrounded by the game of football. We either played, coached at some point, and so when we do – start working with these teams we have a level of understanding from what a, a practice looks like what a game looks like what you know, coaches and players want and don't don't want how we can easily integrate into practice too so we've really built something we, we think is special and you know we, we think we're headed the right direction yeah now you just reminded me something again trent and if you have to go i, I understand um I read where you all were looking at possibly building a, pl- um, I, I don't want to say playlist, that's a terrible word, library, a play library, that's what I was looking for, from uh, actors possibly. Is that something that that you've looked at? We, we have, and that would be more for our uh, you know baseline kind of high school version of our product that we could mass produce and and distribute to right. any high school player or coach that would want that. And in order to make that you know the best possible, uh, we we can't just go to any sure. you know, local high school or community college. We really want you know whether you call them actors or some sort of hired staff to to run these plays to build this library to make it look. Right 
the way it needs to look, and we've we've had conversations about that. What about uh, getting over the stigma of hey, there's another uh, group on our field? I'm talking about NFL here, um, right. recording our plays. Uh, yeah, I mean, with the, before we even get out onto the field, we you know have to get the approval of all the coaches and the staff, and they have to be all on the same page. And we're we're not going to overstep any boundaries once we do get out there. So that that stigma is, is usually not. Um, not in, in play when we do get out onto the field. Okay. All right. Well, look, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, being my guest tonight. And um, I really, really have enjoyed it. So um, I, you're, you're out at Stanford? Uh, we are in California. I'm, I'm currently in Southern California, but our headquarters are okay. uh, in Menlo Park, just uh, the next town over from Stanford. Okay. All right. Well, look, I'm going to let you get on to your evening. It, it's two It's two hours uh, – um, I guess earlier out that way. And so you got a little more evening left than we do out here, but, uh, I really appreciate it and, uh, best of luck to you. And, uh, if you, if you ever want to call back, you have an open invitation. We'd love to talk to you again. Thank you very much, Michael. I'd love to. Thanks for having me on the show. Okay. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. All right. You too. The Hey Techie Show is produced by Mike Stedham and co-produced by The Guru. Station manager is Billy Dunn. Join us again next time for another exciting installment of The Hey Techie Show. It's going to be great, maybe.